Great. So, so now we're just waiting for Hadi to come back on. And uh, I certainly, my expertise is not in counseling or therapy, but um, I think that if I'm sort of going to talk a little bit before Hadi gets on, I can say that. Oh, I hear you. <laughs> we don't see you. There she is. Alhamdulillah. Thank you again, Hadia, for uh, for making the time for us. I'm just going to hand the floor over to you right away. So, Bismillah. alaikum wa rahmatullah. And um, thank you all for coming and responding to our call in a very short notice. And I want to say I'm thank you so much to the amazing Robota team who put all of this together and who has been helping me. Uh, I, I have to say, you know, like when we see Ansitamra or any of the teachers online, we think that it's easier than it really is. Like it's kind of, uh, so I'm, if you see me looking like to the right or to the left, this is my first time I'm doing this. I'm used to seeing students uh, in front of me. Um, so thank you all again for all, all your help and for this opportunity. Um, 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 I want to say that I we have like two goals for today, inshallah. The first one is to address, as Ancestor Amra said, the, the incident that happened in Virginia. Um, we're going to talk about, you know, um, how to address it and uh, ways to, to cope with what's happening. And the other, the other goal is to uh, provide you with some resources. So, um, you know, whether whether depending on where you live, um, you can have like the opportunity to have to meet like therapists um, uh, in person, or we have other like online resources. So really, um, this is just the beginning of this work that we're hoping to uh, grow. Um, I'm very uh, happy to to. Uh, um, uh, you know, to be part of Rabata and to kind of, um, uh, you know, one of the, one of the, uh, actually the mission of Rabata is to create positive change, cultural change. And I'm hoping that um, um, uh, what we do in, in mental health is, is really uh, changing this culture of our community of how they perceive um, uh, mental health and seeking services. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to this day when we, um, when we think about having our annual checkup uh, with a uh, with a therapist, like what we how we do it with a doctor, and we don't feel ashamed, we feel just comfortable, we feel just yeah, you know, the time is here, it's coming, I need to to check, or maybe every six months. Um, so that's the hope to change this culture, and and uh, inshallah, you know, we go like step by step. I know we have a lot of work to do for that, but I'm hoping that we will get to the there, inshallah. Um, um, and as Anse said, we will have some time that we will have that you know you will ask me questions, and I'll be very happy to answer them. If our time is up and I couldn't um, go through them, then um, um, I can answer afterwards. We're going to provide you with a with a, an email uh, to email me and we to set up times for for support. I would say um, uh, we're putting all of this together. So for this week, you would have um, you would. Whoever wants to talk to me, uh, it's can, it's going to be like a shorter like uh, of a session. It's not going to be like 50 minutes like I do it um, as usual. Uh, something very important I want to address is, um, you know, when we talk about mental illness or like some incidents that happen, or like in general, you know, when people talk about a, a, de a depression or an anxiety or any mental health related issue, it's very possible that we get um, uh, triggered by what people say so so I I just want you to to really be kind of like nice to yourself and careful and if I say anything that might make you feel um, not comfortable and might remind you of, of you know something that happened to you or something that happened to your to your family so please either like ask someone for help we're gonna put uh, we're gonna put uh, uh, the um, um, like a hotline uh, for mental health services um, uh, on the screen. If you can wait until I'm done, uh, I can also help you afterwards. So 
just be aware of that, that sometimes we get disturbed or what we call it like triggered and we don't know why we don't expect it. We just say, Oh my God, I didn't know that, you know, I'm, uh, this is happening to me or I'm just affected by what you said. Um, when we, I mean, first I'm going to start with statistics and we know that in general, like suicide specific, especially this, this year or this summer, it's been like, it's been a topic that's been talked about um, a lot. We have like, we lost in the summer, this talented designer, Kate Spade, you know, with all her colorful and happy colors. Then we had a little bit after that, Anthony Bourdain also like he's, he's known for, you know, traveling and all of this like food that he made and people thought that he's really happy. And then all of a sudden we were surprised by this death. And, you know, like it, it, this week, it's not only um, um, this incident on Tuesday in Virginia. I, I'm one of the Robota threads. One of the sisters posted that she she's on a cooking thread. And she also like the, the, the woman who was in, ch in charge also um, committed suicide. So it's a it's a topic uh, that, you know, affects us all. Um, regardless to our uh, to what religion we come from or what back, background we come from. And in terms of, you know, numbers, uh, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in 2016, um, it says that suicide is the 10 leading cause for death um, in the U.S. And it's the second leading cause for um, uh, people between the age of um, 15 and 24. So this is really... Um, scary it's real um but you know that's why we need really to um, talk about it and address it and it's really today it's an invitation to um to to let you know that robota is providing this safe space um we want this platform to be like a, a safe um trustworthy and for people to feel like comfortable uh, that they can share with whatever they can share and everything is confidential. And again, as I said, I'm, I'm reinforcing that this is a culture. Um, I thought like, you know, when I, when I was in Syria 20 years ago and I did my undergrad, I, people thought that, you know, going for psychology, that means I'm kind of crazy, you know, like I'm, you know, my study will change my, my brain somehow and something bad will happen to me. But then, Ten years later, when I came to the States, I was really shocked that people also had stigma. You know, people also were, were, were scared. They wouldn't tell you. Um, and I'm not talking about a specific community. I really, I worked with people from different backgrounds, and I was always surprised by this fact that, you know, there is this stigma of mental health. People don't want to um, admit or tell people that there's something wrong because they think that, you know, they're the only ones who are... You know, I mean, for many reasons. One of, first of all, they think you know that uh, not everybody has that, and it's a sign of, of weakness. Uh, something else has to do with uh, you know trusting other people. And you know, if I tell you something, or if I told this counselor, would she? What would she think about me? Would she tell someone else? Um, and the idea of uh, you know, like I'm stronger than that. What's wrong with me? You know, like you know, nothing is happening. Um, so. So that's why, I mean, we're, we're saying that it's okay to feel that way. Like we know that the stigma is there and we're trying to, inshallah, to, to change that. Um, okay, so actually when, what I also want to say is that I was happy. I was at ISNA last week and I was moderating um, a session on suicide. Um, and, and, and we, the speakers have resources that I would, uh, would share with you um, in the end, uh, but they we did a poll, so we asked people to use their phones. There was um, uh, uh, the therapist was uh, Sakina, um, uh, sorry Camila Rashad from uh, Pennsylvania, uh, with Dr. Samira Ahmed from Michigan and Brother Human from Khalid Center. So we asked the audience uh, to to just say who's having or who has had in their life like suicidal thoughts. We were about like 60 people in the audience and 47 people said that they have suicidal thoughts. And so imagine almost half of the audience. Then we asked them if any of their family members have suicide thoughts or like anyone committed suicide. So it was more about like the thoughts and, and, and what they responded was 26%. 
So it tells you, I mean, first of all, I was happy that people are courageous. Yes, we didn't know who they are, and that's not the point to know who they are, but just to, to say that we're having this problem. Um, uh, for ISNA to have like presentations like or talks like that, so that means we are, I know we're slowly going towards that, but, but we've started, which is great. And, uh, and for them to, to, to seek help. Um, uh, so, so that was, that was um, um, uh, uh, promising. Now, now, I mean, if we want to start with uh, being aware, so, so let's say now we're having this tragedy like two days ago and, you know, there's this death and we're all affected by it. Um, it people are having, you know, people having, have different feelings and I want to say, that uh, it is okay to have different feelings. It's okay sometimes to uh, be numb, or, you know, you don't know how you're feeling. Um, it's okay to um, have, like, as I said, like feel differently because people are different. Some people uh, would text me and say, I'm, I'm so confused. I'm so I'm sad. I'm so um, um, uh, depressed. I feel guilty. Um, I, I, or like I'm in denial or like, you know, I'm, I'm very angry of what's happening. So, so the, it is very important to know and remember that feelings are different when we have a tragedy like this, even it, if it wasn't suicide, if it wasn't like um, as big as this one still like we react differently we can be in a car accident for example and it is it can be like a traumatic event um, and and still people react differently so some people would be like you know they they're kind of like they recover nothing you know it's they go through let's say they're physically injured they can recover and, and go on with their lives and you see other people who would say oh you know I'm so scared of I can't uh, drive anymore so Always like acknowledging that people are different and respecting those feelings that they have, and we need to, um, um, you know, once we know what our we can we can um, recognize and address what our feeling is, then we can find healthy ways to deal with it. So this is that's why what like what Ansa said. I like to ask about feelings because you know we need to name the thing to be able to deal with it. It's like when you go to the doctor to to for the, for the doctors to give you medication. They need to know what's happening first, right? So, so for us, it's it's we might think that it's easy to know our feelings if we're not used to it. Trust me, it's really um, it's really not that easy. So we know sometimes we although you know like a lot of people that I that I've seen like in my work they talk about their anger, and but we know that anger is like kind of the floating feeling or like kind of like easier to go to the surface because it's more acceptable than sadness. It's more acceptable than fear. So it's, it's, this anger comes and covers other feelings. But once, you know, we're having this conversation with a person, we can dig deep as counselors and we know, we, we kind of help them see that, no, you know, you're scared of this or you're afraid of this. Then they can deal with it. So, so always try to think about like, okay, how am I feeling? Have a conversation uh, with someone. You can have a conversation with a counselor um, about, you know, like how to help me feel how to help me like address what I'm feeling. This is this is very important. The other thing is to accept our emotions. Let's say after yesterday, uh, after like this suicide, uh, uh, like tragic event, um, whatever you're feeling, um, just accept it. Um, because you know, like we can't. I mean, you can't help yourself if you don't accept it. And sometimes there is no, um, there is no logical kind of reason for feelings it's just like you know we, we 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 acknowledge them we accept them and we start um uh, getting help for them um i i also um let me just see one, two, one second so in terms of um uh, science um and i want to repeat again this talk is going to be really very general um uh, because it's just an introduction, but, you know, I'm, it, I hope it's going to be helpful in terms of like how we cope in general. It doesn't have to be this specific incident, um, but we can, you know, like have further discussion uh, later. So when, when we talk about um, signs and symptoms for how, you know, for people who are going through like a difficult time, it's what we say is that, you know, you can have symptoms and signs, like people say, like, I'm sad, 
I don't feel like I want to eat. I don't feel I want to meet with people. I'm, I'm, um, you know, like I, I just want to isolate. I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't have any energy. Um, we can have all different symptoms. What makes it really significant for us as counselors when we work with people is, is the idea of how much the person is functioning. You know, so if you're having symptoms that that is affecting your functioning, so you're not able to do your work as you're usually do it. You're not able to go to school and concentrate and, and do your, your, your school work. You're not able to do your duties as, as a mother or as a, as a wife or as a daughter or whatever. In, in any field that you work, um, once you can't really function for for like a, a long period of time, let's say usually we look at like three to six months, this is when we say, okay, this is a red flag and we need to, um, and, you know, some help needs to be uh, Taken care of now. Now, in terms of suicide in specific, we need to be very careful of what what a, what a person would say about uh, how, when they describe life. So they would say, for example, you know, I can't um, I can't take living anymore. This life is not worth living. Sometimes they people tend to give away their stuff. Um, um, you know, the isolation is a big one. Um, feeling um, uh, hopeless and talking negatively, um, not taking care of self. So, but, you know, people would say, so, so what I would really encourage um, uh, to, to ask the person, like, you know, are you, are, are you thinking of hurting yourself? Now, there is this big myth that people think if we ask someone about that, that we might encourage them to do something or to hurt themselves. This is a myth. If you feel that someone around you, and I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm saying this based on what I told you, like in the room, almost 50% of people that were at ISNA at that specific time, even if we were only 60, half of them have had suicidal thoughts. It doesn't mean they're going to act on them, but it means maybe, it means they need support and they need help. So, so again, it's asking someone if they have any intention of hurting themselves would not lead them to hurt themselves. On the contrary, it will make them feel that somebody really noticed that there is something wrong with me and, and I need help. They feel like, you know, somebody is noticing me. I'm not like kind of, I don't matter whether, whether, whether I'm there or not. So this is important, you know, asking them, you know, what they need. How can we help you? Try to distract them. If there's any activity that we can help them do just to make them feel that they're not alone, you know, and that's the thing of like, even for us all, when we, when we think about like, it, it's important to identify um, some uh, hobbies or things or activities that we like to do. So when, when, when this time of, of hardship comes, we know that, okay, if this happens, I can do this and this and that, and this will help help me uh, go through this uh, difficult time. So we can help them, help them figure that out. If you feel that you know they're 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 really you feel like you're not comfortable, they're saying you know I'm I I shouldn't be alive or or nothing really matters. Then you know you really need to contact someone like a, seek professional help. Um, uh, we have I don't know if they can see that. Uh, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. I can see it here, but I'm not sure if they can see it on the screen. So please, uh, whenever you can share it, maybe people can um, save it. Yes, thank you. So it's 24 seven, you can call or text. So, so that could be for people who are seeking help themselves or if you want to help um, others as well. If we, uh, the other resource, we have like the toolkit by the Family and Youth Institute that's um, run by Dr. Samira Ahmed in Michigan. It's a great resource. It has like a community um, response um, for suicide. It has, um, yeah, it comes after this one. Um, so it has, we'll put it like, if, if it's not there here, like we can send it late, later, but you will see it. Um, it has a toolkit for suicide prevention of like, okay, what are the signs if they're not talking, as, as I said, if they're isolating, if they're, um, uh, you know, cutting themselves or, yeah, or they're not doing their daily activities. I can't see the other one, but again, if we were not able to, to share that, we can share, share it afterwards, after we finish this um, uh, talk. Um, um, we also have the 
um, the Institute of Muslim Mental Health also has a lot of resources. And yesterday, actually, um, we had a, also a webinar on suicide risk and prevention, prevention by Dr. Rania Awad. Uh, the recording is not um, uh, up yet for everyone, but I also send it, share it, and, and send it so we all can, can, can benefit. So what I'm trying to say is that, alhamdulillah, there are resources, but it's always like how, you know, it's, it's, it's always like, if, you know, if people know about them or not. Um, and we're working hard to collaborate um, our efforts as, as, um, um, as Muslim therapists. We also actually have, like, even for what happened, like the suicide incident, um, even therapists themselves are having those threats of supporting each other. Because that tells you, even if we are in this, um, we are in this um, uh, field and we know the signs and we know that we should seek help. We still, we still need to support each other because we're all human. We all have feelings um, uh, we, and we all need to kind of seek help whenever need, need it. Yeah, so, the, so there's, yeah, if you scroll down here, we have all the resources. We have also the Mel, uh, Muslim well, uh, Wellness Foundation also has resources for suicide. The one that I mentioned that was um, uh, was the Institute, the, the Family and Youth Institute in, in Michigan. Okay, and here you can see also um, the email that you can um, email me, counseling at robota.org. Um, we can set up a time, and this is going to be um, for this week specifically, and we can talk about um, further steps, inshallah. making sure I'm not missing anything. How much time do we have left? I just want to um, see if, if you want to start um, writing some uh, questions. Too many screens. See any question? Well, actually, there's no question. Okay. So, Assalamu okay. So, if you, whenever you're ready to start questions, Hadia, I can okay. help you with them. I can help you with the questions in the box. Okay. So, you want to, you, you want to, like, not, not yet. Let I me know whenever. I know how much time I have before I do that. How much time do I have in general? Can you hear me well? Can you hear me? Okay. So late. we started a little bit late, so you've been on. You've been talking about half an hour now. Okay. Okay. So so let me. I'm gonna move to um, ways to cope. How about that? And then I think other things will be covered in questions. Let me do the coping, and then that's the, what I really Wonderful. Um, hear about most. Okay, so so um, again, let me just summarize uh, quickly. If you have any, if you know anyone, or you have suicide thoughts yourself, uh, or you feel helpless, um, we have the resources that we shared. You have the uh, hotline. Um, that's uh, 24 7 also we shared that um, and you know don't hesitate it's always like even if you know someone who has that please help them and call if, if worst case scenario you are somewhere and and you need someone that you know is at risk of harming themselves just call 911 uh, what, what we're trying to emphasize here is that these things are, are happening like um, even even the uh, you know, Khalil Center did some study for studies. They out of the two thousand people that they've been serving, uh, uh, five hundred of them, uh, they said that they they had they've had suicidal thoughts. So so it is real, um, and and um, you know that's why I really encourage you to to seek help and to 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 learn like few things to take care of yourself in order to help yourselves and others. So the first thing when we talk about coping. We always say, 
okay we, we start like physically like how do you take care of yourself meaning what about your daily routine um and you know like as Anse mentioned i'm specialized in trauma and and you know when i see like i've i've, I've worked with people who have like like whether you like, trauma of of war or whether like sexual trauma um uh, really like the first step to help them is is just to kind of keep this routine like those small steps and sometimes they'll be really surprised they'll be like oh my god are you serious you're telling us about small steps and we have all of those problems and we say yes it's think about it as like the baby um uh, or when we have our children you know like you know we know that they sometimes act out if they don't have if their routine got messed up a little bit so it's 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 really it's very important to think about like how much i'm i'm, I'm sleeping am i being rested when i sleep how much what about my meals am i taking meals regularly um uh you know like really I, I, am i exercising exercise is a big thing so so physical health Help, help us process this um, uh, uh, pain and, and emotional distress and help us cope. So it's a big thing. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm saying again, it's a big thing, physical health. We really need to take care of that because we're all like created as a whole. Um, um, uh, also, um, uh, you know, like the second big thing is like how much you are getting connect, connected to your social support. And this is something I, you know, I come from a culture where, where people think, you know, I'm being tested in a certain way. Um, I don't want to ask for help because that means that I'm weak or that means that I'm not depending on Allah or that means I'm not, um, you know, like I can't, I'm not fulfilling what I'm supposed to be fulfilling. All different reasons that you can think of. But I'm here to tell you, it's part of strength, really, and courage to ask for help. Because then you're, we're, you're admitting that you're weak. We're all weak. Like, who, who's not weak? We're all created. We're all human beings. We have our strengths and we have our weaknesses. And and this is how it's part of life. It's like, it's like you can't say all life is like full of like, it's all like perfect and happy and everything is great. We know that it's not a reality. Inshallah, our akhirah is going to be like that reality. But for now, life is all about those challenges and tests. This is the reality of it. And we as human beings, it's the same thing. We have our weaknesses and we... We, we are, we, you know, we need to seek help uh, um, uh, and this is how we get our, our uh, strength. And even يعني, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the hadith when he said like المؤمن المؤمن كل, كل يشد بعضه بعضا. So it's like this, this how, how, how believers are, are supposed to be for each other and how when if someone is in pain, the other one will feel the pain. So we're, we're, the social support is, is crucial, uh, sometimes even if it's, it's one person. So, so, so seek help, your family, friends, uh, your religious community. Um, uh, your, we have this beautiful sisterhood uh, uh, on the Rabatha. It's amazing. Like, it really makes me so happy when I see people writing things on threads and how others are responding and making them feel so comfortable and making dua for each other. So all of this is, is essential in coping when we have any problem. So again, the first one is the physical health and how we take care of ourselves. The second one is seeking social support. Um, and uh, the third one is uh, making dua. How are we doing like um, uh, spiritually? And, and again, this is when I worked with a lot of clients from different religion backgrounds and i always ask them and this is actually it's it's psychology now reinforces that they say you know spiritual um connection is is crucial in healing and this is very exciting to us because at some point i would say like 20 years ago that wasn't the case there was this kind of division between psychology and religion now it's not the case they know that this is a, a protective factor they know it's very important so actually with the clients that i worked with we have in the assessment we have to ask them if they have if they're practicing any religion and it's always a relief for me because i know that once they have that, that they will, it's like, as I said, it's a protective factor. It will make them um, stronger. So pray. Talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows um, how you feel. He knows about your confusion. He knows about your um, sadness and, and seek help, um, uh, you know, like, and ask him for support. It's really, try, try to think about it as when we have, let's say we have, we're going through surgery or we have like a, we have a disease so we seek all the ways to, for help we go to doctors we, we take medication we do surgeries and side by side we pray for Allah for healing and shifa 
So it's the same thing. It's like we do all we seek. We seek mental health services. We take care of ourselves. We, we, we talk to our friends and social support. And we also, at the same time, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for healing from this. So in our deen, it's beautiful how, how those things are addressed. And as I said, be aware of the signs. Uh, if you feel that you're not functioning well, uh, learning more, inshallah, and those resources that I shared, inshallah, going forward, we can talk about each um, uh, problem, each mental health problem, what are the signs, what are the, um, um, how do we know when we have to go to, to a therapist and how we can um, deal with them. Um, and at this point, I think uh, I'll start taking some uh, questions. If you have questions and you didn't have time for that, I'll, I'll, I can email you. We'll figure out a way to respond. So, Hadi, we have a few questions here that I'm going to read to you from the box first. <clears throat> I don't think you can see them on your com computer, but the first one, I think you, um, I think you already responded to it in a de to a degree, but I, I still think it's worth it. Just sort of maybe summarizing, and that is, how do we recognize someone facing difficulty? And this, the second one, very similar to that how do we find those that need help is there something we should be looking out for i think especially with these tragedies the one in dallas and also the one in virginia these are people that many people felt like wait a minute they're fine they're great they're leaders they're helping us what's going on how is it that they are in this difficult some of them because they weren't quite close enough to know the real pain that they were going in going through um and others maybe because they hit it well so what, what do you think how do we find out how do we recognize um, someone in our in our family, let's say, like I was actually interested in what you said about the ISNA crowd, that sixty percent said they themselves had thought about and had ideation about suicide, but only twenty percent of their family members. And I wondered, you know, <laughs> I bet that twenty percent is just us not talking to each other. And so again, in our families, how do we recognize someone facing difficulty? And the people around us, how do we recognize that? How do we find those that need help? If we, uh, what, what should we be looking out for? Those are the, those two questions are very similar. Okay, so so I would say asking is one way, like what, paying attention. So we live now in a culture that we're really like everything is really very fast, and we're not paying attention. So when we're present with our family, and and we ask them, and we recognize that people have feelings like we do, yeah, they and they express it differently then we kind of like it's worth being curious about what this how this person is feeling and how sometimes if we know like you know this family member doesn't want to show doesn't say how they're feeling we can kind of like we be proactive and we initiate and we do something good i mean really when people i mean with those like teenagers that i worked with at this like rehab for for a residential facility for for addictions I would say 90% of my clients um, had suicide attempts. And, but what they would say was significant is only one person that, that they really trusted and they felt that they cared. And even sometimes when we are in the session and you would think like, oh my God, like, you know, even with me, like, you know, specialized in trauma, sometimes I feel, it, is it about like, the, sometimes you don't have to go deep, really. They just need someone to feel that they are close to or they genuinely cares. So that's, I always say that people, we, we, we're so, you know, when, even when we give our salam, right, when we, when we enter like a masjid or like a gathering, we know very well when you say salam alaikum and when you smile, if it's fake or genuine, right? We know it. We feel it. We're created this way. So, so now this like kind of like fast pace of life, it just like everyone is like, yeah, let's see each other. Yeah, how are you doing? We're not really, we're asking questions and not, we're not waiting for answers. And, and so, so what I'm trying to say is that sometimes it takes one act of kindness and caring to save somebody's life. And this is coming from my patients that I dealt with. And I, it only takes from me really to listen. And then, then they will say, oh my God, you're, you helped us so much. And I really just feel like I didn't do anything. I was just there, very accepting. That's because, because that's the thing. If we think about it, why don't people trust each other? Even if, if, we're, if we don't talk about like like a counselor uh, a client relationship, it's because we're because of the reactions like bad experiences that they have, right? Like it's kind of someone is shaming them, um, someone is telling them, "Come on, you're exaggerating that. Come on, like you need to grow up." Uh, uh, and I'm not saying that 
pe some people don't do that. Like it's just this balance of like how can we push someone or how can we kind of like take a take a, take a step back and think do they really need support? Does that make sense? It's just this fine line of like. Um, um, and when people say comments, as I said, like sometimes they say, you know, I'm nobody loves me. I'm not supposed. To, I wish I wasn't alive. These we need to take these seriously, and we need to kind of think if they're they like, if, if they're isolating. We can see this a lot, especially with the teenagers. If they're isolating, any age actually, but kind of like it's increasing now. Um, it's it's a very it's a red flag. You know, like if someone, someone, if, even if we can, we can come to them and say, oh, you know, I, you haven't been active on social media. What's going on? Like, you know, so when we care about someone, we can really kind of small acts would matter because we love them. We care. Um, so, yeah. Can I, don't I know. say something? Because I really, you know, when we, we went on the road trip together and it was the growing hope road trip where we are going from place to place, really trying to grow hope. And that was a really sincere hope. And, you know, Hadia, I'm saying this to everyone here, on this trip, Hadia, she always was asking us, how are you feeling? And we would sit down in the group, and the first, like, three or four times she said that, we all kind of nervously laughed and thought, uh, what do she mean? How are we <laughs> feeling? Nobody really wants to say how they're feeling. But by the, I would say by the time we got to, maybe not even until Houston, which actually was quite deeply into the trip, we, well, no, it was a little earlier than that. We started really sharing how we felt. So my point here is that when the things that you're telling us to do, I want to encourage everyone to do it often. And even if you don't get the response that you're hoping for when you're first asking people how they feel, when you're first coming to them with that sincerity of, I really want to know, if you're not getting that response right away, don't give up. Ask again. Ask again. Ask again. Hadi was, the, was alone in asking 14 women. Who, you know, alhamdulillah, we were all just on this trip together. It was a beautiful time. But yet, that question, I mean, ask that question was really helpful to all of us, I think, especially towards the end. And especially when we did have a few incidents that were a little bit shaky uh, for each one of us. So, I really, I want to emphasize, you, I, I saw that example in you, Javier, that we keep on asking, keep on asking, keep on asking. Don't just take the first time for an answer. I'm going to go back into the questions again. Um, at what point in being triggered do you seek help? Are there red flags that tell you you're getting close to dangerous territory? Are there red flags they're saying? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I would say um, isolating. Again, I know I've been saying this, but it's a big thing. Um, because we can be, you know, we can, you can be depressed, but it doesn't mean that you're going to hurt yourself. You know what I mean? Like some, yeah, it's kind of like, they all come together of like, okay, they, people don't have interest in, in, uh, in doing what they used to be doing. So, so, you know, like if you know someone who would like to, who was like outgoing, like to go, like meet friends, do some activities and they stop doing that, not for a day or two. We're talking here about longer times. I would say, I would say two, three months. Like it really depends if, of, of the, the kind of like the, the, the other symptoms as well. So what, not, losing interest in doing things, Losing in it, uh, even their, um, I, I can't think of the word, the, uh, their appetite. We always think about the appetite. We think, we, we ask about sleep. Um, uh, and uh, and saying, you know, pay attention to what, what they're saying. Um, and you can see it, you know, sometimes with their physical appearance, you could say, tell if someone is really depressed. So these are all together. Um, um, uh, isolation, I would say, again, is a big thing. Um, all together, we'll decide. Okay. Okay. So and I would I just say, sorry to interrupt. I would just say it's always better to go and seek professional help. Be you know, like even if you don't think the symptoms are are you know kind of like uh, like really red flags. If if uh, even if at the beginning you don't have to, to do as a present preventive preventative so that's what we're hoping. Like usually, it's it's called mental health, not mental illness. You know what I mean? Like we try to kind of. We're hoping that people just, you know, check up on, just to make sure that the doc, it's like when you do your, your blood work and, you know, you make sure that everything is okay, um, you know, and then you're, um, it's better than uh, too late. I think that's a really important point. And I think it's, it goes back to what you started out saying, which is this whole idea of positive cultural change and changing that. So when you are sick, if I can phrase it in the way you're phrasing it, if a person gets a sore throat, 
they know when they don't have to go to the doctor because they have like what we would call just a cold. But we also know when we cross that line with our bodies because we've sort of gotten used to paying attention to our physical bodies. But we don't always know. But we don't always know what to look for when we cross that line with mental health. And I think what I hear you saying is just like you might err to the side of going in to see the doctor, even if you're, you know, it doesn't have to be something so serious. We maybe just need an antibiotic. It's okay. Go in and see a therapist if you just need to talk once. That could be helpful to us. Like taking a cold pill, it's still helpful, and it's not going to hurt, especially if you find someone who you can really work with. Would you agree with that, Hadia? Absolutely. And I and I also uh, another thing like it's kind of um, many people would feel relieved when we tell them it's normal to feel this way. You know, just so just let's say you're coming at the beginning of feeling something, and we're telling them, of course. It's 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 normal. Then they know, you know, we can tell them it's gonna. It's normal to take like maybe a month. You know, now with this tragedy, like there's, we should allow, especially for people who are affected by it, like people in the Virginia community. Like we we saw Anseraga is so much affected by it, and uh, and she was talking about it, and and so for for her who worked in the same community, I would say, you know, even if she if she was shaken for a whole month, I wouldn't be surprised. And people vary. There isn't like you know, like kind of specific length. But I would say, even if it was a month, it doesn't mean she's gonna forget about this family afterwards. But 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 it is normal. If we don't get affected, that means there is something wrong with us, you know. But even for us as therapists, as I said, we've been setting uh, like uh, threats to support each other as professionals because because this is really kind of like difficult stuff. So, so yeah, I mean, I mean, many times people would come to me and they, it just comforts them to, to know that it's normal to feel this way. And, and you will be surprised how people need to hear that. You know, like, I just feel like, ah, oh, you didn't, they say, oh, and, and that's why when, with many, actually, I forgot to say that, with big tragedies, like even with natural um, uh, disasters, the, and even with, with, uh, with work, with like, like uh, uh, trauma uh, of war, what they do when we have, when people are sharing all of those disasters, whether natural or unnatural, like wars, the the, the the first thing that we do is having people into um, support groups. So this way, we don't do one by one. I mean, first because there's no capacity. Second, because it makes them feel that they're not alone and they're sharing all of this tragedy together. So what's happening is that when you hear many people saying, like you know, I feel so scared. What's going to happen next? I feel like so. Um, so sad I can't sleep at night I feel like I wake up at night and I'm like you know like I'm I'm in fear or like you know I can't go back to sleep when they hear that and it's often this that they all have similar symptoms that will comfort them and they can learn from each other ways of coping and it's beautiful because you would think like oh my god you know the whole community is affected by that but actually once they're together you will be impressed by the way that they can support each other and it doesn't mean that the symptoms are away, but you know, people deal with their issues differently, and so people can learn from each other, and they know that they're not alone. So, so that's the thing when we have like, you know, a whole community. I mean, I'm hoping that we get to the point that you know we can have, you know, like kind of like group support or community support that we can really kind of. Um, yeah, we are doing support one another. Yeah. Yeah. A few more comments here, and a couple more questions in the box. So. We have someone who says, our women don't open up because people will make fun of them. And referring to one of the tragedies, I believe, on Virginia, she was a close family member, and I can't even stop thinking about what was happening in her mind. So this, there isn't a question here, but do you have any comment to make about either of those? If, if that, that women can't talk, they're saying? They can't. Often women don't open up because they're afraid people will mock them or make fun of how they feel. And I, I hear that. Like, I, I don't know that... I think it turns on the family, to be sure, but certainly in my family, if we have too much emotion about something. I told my sister the other day that I, I like people, and she laughed at me and said, that's impossible, you're a gray. And I was like, no, I really like people. I really do. So, of course, that being a little older, I can sort of defend my own beliefs, how I feel about things. But I do think when you're younger, and sometimes, as Sarah is saying in the box, that people can dismiss how we feel, no matter what it is, whether it's positive or negative, and what, what do we do about that? What if we feel our feelings are dismissed? I mean, what we, we can teach people. I mean, sometimes at the same at the moment we can't do that. But it takes once we know ourselves, if we are convinced ourselves that this is the right way and this is the healthy way of, of recognizing what we feel and then you know expressing it, then then we can create this 
positive cultural change. And I mean, I mean, and it takes, it, it's going to take a long time because, you know, the, the stigma is huge and people are, I mean, I know the reaction till now. I've been in my community for almost 10 years. I know that people avoid me. Some people ask me, have you graduated yet? You know, what kind of job do you have? You know, like, so it's, it's, I'm used to that. They, and I know it's, it's hard, but what I'm trying to say is once the more learning and education and knowledge that we have about the importance of how we feel, not because I want to say I feel this and that, but because we know that some feelings sometimes get in the way of, of our functioning. You know, I, I really want to emphasize that. It's not, it's not like how you're feeling, okay, yeah, I'm happy, I'm excited, I'm scared. Yeah, the thing is like, what can we do about that? And how is that holding us back from what we're supposed to be doing? You know, because I believe this life, like again, like we know it's all tests and challenges. And I think like people would have, uh, people have like, mental illnesses because they, they didn't know how to cope. So the, their toolbox is kind of empty. So the more that we give them coping tools, the more that they can they can overcome the other challenge of this life smoothly. So that's yeah. if I want to simplify. Yeah. So so that's why we need to know first how we're feeling. Let's say even when we talk about feelings of jealousy, you always answer talk about that. Like you know, once we name it, if we don't name it, we can't really we can't really deal with it. So, so that's the idea. So people are going to make fun of you. People are, you know, like when you talk about feelings, people are going to, you know, kind of like say, you know, there people are sarcastic in general. And we have that a lot, like in my culture at least. But but it's kind of, it's just being persistent with it. And and, and I see, I mean, what I want to say really, I've seen, it, it's amazing how you see people heal because of just small acts of kindness, as I said. And it's part of our religion. And, and as we say, listening, like even when we talk about why don't people seek services, for example, because of one of the big thing is they don't trust that you're, you're not going to tell their secrets. So confidentiality, which is, you know, it's something people can sue therapists if they, they break the confidentiality. I would say that this is amanat al-majlis, right? So, mm. so Islamically, it's, it's, we can't really, if somebody turns, what's the hadith? If, so, if, you're, if the man turns around, that's, that's amanat, you can't really tell the secret. So subhanAllah, it's all kind of together, you know, but I would say that I would, I, I've seen how doing those small things really affect people and help them psychologically. And um, what did I want to say? Yeah, so keep expressing and, and keep just being strong about the way that you, you know, feel and express your feelings. That's my advice to the sister who asks. And we can yeah. help you with that. Yeah. Yeah. We have a few more here that I want that are some a little bit faster answers, I think, and I just want to... I think you addressed this one, but I want to read it and then have you say it clearly. How can we help someone who is suicidal seek therapy when they fear they could lose their children based on what they reveal in therapy? Yeah. Well, so, I mean, I would say if they need that help, they need it. You know, like, I, we can't, I can't really risk it and say, you know, how about you just calm them down or, 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 because we really don't know. Like, like it's even for us, like, Are you man? does that answer the question? Let me ask you a question. If, if, if I, if I was a mother of young children, let's say, and I came to you and I talked to you about my suicidal concerns, do you have to then report me because as a mother, if it's suicidal? No, what, what, what I would do. Okay. So we ask, we say, do you have an intent? So it's, it's both. So when somebody says I have like suicidal thoughts, and we say, do you have an intent and plan? Which is mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, so when we have a plan, some people will tell me, yes, I do. If once they say I have a plan, so I have people who tell me I want to jump off the building, like I live in the seventh floor. I want to jump off the bridge. I want to take, I'm, I'm you know, getting this uh, bottle of pills. Um, it's ready. I just can take it. Once okay. they say that, if they have a plan, then we have to report them. I have to call 911 because... I can't just say, please promise me to be okay if I send you back. Um, so I'm preventing this a tragedy, basically. Even when sometimes I feel like I'm not sure if the person is faking it or not. You know, sometimes we sense something. We can't depend on that because it's always better to be on the safe side and, and to hospitalize people. Now, now, if they say only we have thoughts, then it's a, we have something called safety plan. Every, every counselor is trained to have a safety plan. And every, every counseling place, every agency, organization, they have that. Which means they would say, okay, what, what are the things that will help you uh, uh, alive? 
kind of like what's what gives you meaning so because, you know because at this point people sometimes they can give some answers what can you do to kind of make sure that you know how can you take care of yourself let's say even for tomorrow and let's check with you again tomorrow who can you if you really feel that you want to do it right now like who is a person that you can talk to because sometimes people have suicidal thoughts and they're scared they need help that's why they tell you basically you know mm. if people don't need help they can just do it so 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 basically you you'll have a safety plan but i would say not any any person like just seek help uh, uh, for the safety plan um, you have to prevent like more uh, tragic uh, incidents yeah i agree with that all right so a um, few more things here we have someone who's saying uh, so friend should friends and family then be blamed that they didn't see the sign in their family members who do commit suicide or murder suicide or any kind of terrible tragedy I mean, I really would say that when people know they will do their best to help, I mean, I mean, this feelings of guilt, we all, we often have, I mean, I mean, there's always this question about that, even when we were at ISNA, many people ask this question, you know, somebody died in the community or like, you know, in the school, what can we do? I mean, I'm not sure how much they knew, like, you know, if they knew of a loved one wanting to kill themselves, of course, they would have done their best to prevent it. That's why, and again, we don't have this knowledge, we don't have this culture, and that's why now I'm really happy just for saying that we are here talking about it. We were at ISNA talking about it. It's something that we didn't see before. So, so first of all, as I said, addressing the problem and giving you the tools and knowledge, um, guilt or blame wouldn't really um, um, give you any uh, good or benefit or it will make you feel worse, and this is something that we don't want to do. Uh, maybe now that somebody knows, they can really be aware and 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 you know kind of notice some of the signs and would help them with other people wow. okay and I, I will say something about that as well that it is a trick of shaitan to come and find places to blame uh for us to blame ourselves so then we sort of catapult into a spiritual black hole so definitely that's not the place to go when you're dealing with enough tragedy certainly the place is not to just start blaming yourself there's plenty of other work to do Okay, um, what do you feel the role, we have a few more questions here, I, I think we've, we're hit the, we're almost hit the hour point, so we just have a few more minutes, so we'll just maybe, how do you, what do you, and you don't have to answer this one if you don't have an opinion, have you? what do you feel the role of the mosques is, well oftentimes the mosques don't invest in truly building community, whoops, mm -hmm. and in addition the mosque is your place for perfect people rather than a hospital for the broken, um, so what do you think about that? How do you, what do you think is What's the, the other the part than the mosque? What's the other, the rest of the question I didn't hear? Well, what do you feel about the role of the mosques? Oftentimes the mosques don't invest in truly building community building. They're only there for perfect people. And yeah. um, so what do you think? Yes. So that's a very good question. I'm happy somebody asked that um, because it's, uh, you know, we, mosque is a, is, a, is a community center basically. And, and people, I guess, the there is, there has been some change. I think the role is is very crucial because because here we are kind of differentiating between the role of the imam or the sheikh or the religious um, scholar versus versus you know the expert in mental health. Once they they, they work together um, hand in hand, I think will give like um, uh, perfect um, um, uh, solutions. Now, what I'm I'm gonna say is that the more that the the imam or the mosque or whoever is in charge of the mosque believe in, in the idea of mental health and, and how important it is, the easier it will be for, for community members to seek services. Because, you know, I can, you know, for me, like people, when I talk about it all the time, and I, you know, like I, I, I like this field and I believe uh, in change, people would say, yeah, that's the therapist talking. But when you have someone who is the, the head of this mosque telling them, go seek services, they trust him. Because this is what people do. Like first they do for services that they know. And the services that they know are at the mosque. If they go, we're talking about people who already go and, you know, trust, you know, this. there's this connection, basically. So when we're having the support from the mosque, um, actually, when we were on the road trip, um, I'm trying to think of which mosque um, where Hela was. That's in Iowa, actually. And I saw this hotline for, like, crises and, and a lecture for mental health. And I was like, wow, I told her, what, what is this? And I was really happy. 
um, because again, it's not coming from us as professionals, um, but uh, but it's coming from them, and and that's why that's why even for you, Anse, like just to to uh, to um, to encourage people to to learn and to seek services, that's significant uh, because you believe in like you know how all of this is needed, and and again, I want to emphasize religion or spirituality is crucial but it is a protective factor think about it again as a as a doctor and as when we think about religion and going to the doctor they don't contradict you know because that's the question that I'm always asked and other therapists are always asked you know does it mean that we don't believe in God enough or we're complaining if we go to and seek services or if I say like I'm depressed does that mean that I, my faith it, there's something wrong with my faith the answer is no you know like Worship will help you, but there is a point. It's a chemical imbalance. There is a point that you you know your worship would need other as I said, like other help. So I yeah, think it's so, a, so I, it's a really good parallel with that the physical body that when we're trying to break uh, uh, stigma here. This whole idea that are you not a good Muslim if you get um, if you have arthritis? Like you know, are you? Are you not a good Muslim if you if you have what what did you say if you have what diabetes or diabetes. high blood yeah. pressure yeah high blood pressure high cholesterol all this stuff I mean we, we maybe think we think that's a little bit funny but it is a, I think it's a good parallel uh, to be thinking about well I need to do some preventative work and I want to make sure that my whole self and again relating to what you said earlier this dunya is all about preparing for the next life and so we want to prepare ourselves and. We want to use our, our bodies need to be healthy so we can do that work. Or we need to be mentally healthy, emotionally healthy in order to, to live that life. Okay, so we have just a few more in here. And some of them are comments. I'm not going to read the comments because uh, we are, we're short on time. But we have one question that's a repeat of the earlier one. But I'm, I'm just, even though it's a repeat, I'm going to let you just really quickly re respond to it again. How can someone know at what point he or she should seek help? And so just give me a two-word answer to that one. You can seek help right away, I would say. <laughs> um, okay. The second yeah. you think, should I get help? I think you need help. That's, it's okay, because yeah. it doesn't mean you're weak. It means you're strong. Seeking help means you're strong. I think that's a paradigm shift that you gave us today. Seeking help means you're strong. I love that. Absolutely. And, you're, yeah, and, and when you go meet counselors, they will reinforce that, and you will have really good experience. You know, it's it's uh, it's people who are non-judgmental, who are empathic, who are genuine, and who just try you, to help you with the way that you're thinking. Try to kind of shed some light on, like, what's going on in your life because they have that knowledge. You know, it can be that simple. Last one here. Uh, how do you respond to those who are close to the one who committed suicide and blame themselves for not doing enough even though it isn't their fault? Again, you also responded to this. I just realized as I read it out loud. We did respond to this. But perhaps this is, the question is phrased a tiny bit differently. Maybe you want to say it in a different way. How do you respond to those who are close to the one who committed suicide and blame themselves for not doing enough even though it isn't their fault? What might you, what might you say to someone like that, Hadia? Yeah, I would say... It is in the question. It is not your fault, and and you did not notice it. There is nothing you could have done about it because if you did, you would have done something. There is no way that we would know someone, a close one, a family member, and a loved one, that they're gonna kill themselves and we didn't do it. We didn't know, like you know. And and many people, they're good at hiding it. That's why it succeeded. If you think about it, you know, it's not like it's not like they told us. Usually, as I said, people who tell usually they're seeking help. Which is great, you know. That's why they say I have those um, thoughts. All right. So I would like to just uh, point out to everyone down here at the bottom of this page the um, counseling at robota.org. This is a new email that we just developed today, and that is going to go to Hadia, counseling at robota.org. And what she's offering here is to read your email and see. Uh, this is not a full-on counseling service. I just want to make that clear. This is a support service, a resource for you. Oh, well, hello there. I don't know how I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you come to see me? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to come and see you too, okay? Just a minute. Um, who did you think? Okay, here I come. <laughs> uh, it's not a full-on counseling service or a full-on therapy service right now, but it is a support service, and Hadi is here to answer some basic questions that you have. She herself is highly qualified to give a full service, but we haven't asked her to fully 
volunteer her whole life at this point yet. So, but well, let's see where this takes us and um, what the community needs. All right, thank you so much for joining us. Do you have any final things you'd like Can to say? Can I just say a final one? thing? Yeah. And I would say, yeah, um, I the mosque that we went to, which has the services, the mental health, was at Cedar Rapids. Thank you, uh, Maha. Uh, also, um, uh, at Mecca in Chicago, they've also started that. They asked me to help with that. What I want to end with is the idea that with challenges in life and with those, whatever we go through, also always please remember that this is life and these challenges are coming. And every time, even Asa Tamra always talks about that, like, you know, we finish something and something else comes. This is the reality of life. Now, what I want to say that even with people with, with traumatic um, who went through trauma, okay, uh, we, they talk about, you know, PTSD and, you know, how that affected them. What I want to say and what we've learned recently is that there is something called post-traumatic growth. What that means is that from each um, challenge or tragic event, we can, it depends on how we look at the situation, we can come with it uh, 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 with more growth. So even, even when we're patient with our psychological pain, whether for others or whether it's something that affected us, I, I want you to remember and to know that there is growth out of it if, if, if we deal with it uh, in the right way. So, so I, I hope that, that you know, we're ending this on a positive note, that there is always hope that we're growing, that um, inshallah, I, I pray that Allah guide us to, to the best and, and we get to know about ourselves so we can help ourselves and we can help others. And one last thing I want to say, that we always use the the, uh, the flight attendant analogy. We say, if you don't, you know, when they tell you to put the, 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 the mask on yourself first before helping others, it's crucial to remember that. You need to, to get support and help yourself. Once you do that, you're able to go to your community and family members and give them the help they need. Thank you so much. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.